Come on, somebody praise him all the way back to your seat. Clap your hands and lift your voice. All the way back to your seat. Give God a shout this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Y'all excited this morning? presence of the Lord is here. We came to have church today. I don't know about you, but it's going up this morning. Welcome online visitors again, those that are here. We're excited to have you in the house of God, and we're here today to celebrate what God has been doing in our lives all week, all month, all year. Every moment of our lives, he's been taking care of us. There's a song that says, your goodness is running after us. All our life, all my life, you've been faithful. There's not a moment I can think about that God hasn't been faithful to me. Even when I was blind to it, now I can look back and remember, I could have been dead. I could have been in jail, but all my life, God has been faithful. If he's been faithful, could you clap your hands and give him a praise if you know he's been faithful? There you go. Amen. Praise God. Well, this morning we get a chance to show our faithfulness to a faithful God, and we get to give right back what he's given to us. And this is a great opportunity for you and me to show our gratitude and our love for the one that died for us, for the one that cares and that's faithful to us. We get to show our gratitude to him today with the way that we give. Come on, givers, clap your hands again. We want to give today, and there's a house, a church full of individuals that are grateful. And as I look around, I see grateful individuals that don't mind giving to a good God. And we know our church stands on the principle of giving. We are tithers here in Victory Outreach. We believe in that principle of giving 10% to the Lord, we know and we believe that we can even go above and beyond that and give God special offerings here in the house of God. And we have a ministry within our ministry called United We Can, where we give finances that travel all over the globe to help support third world countries and churches and uh, victory homes and training centers all over the world in places that don't have it like we have it. We get to send finances to help them out. And that is called United We Can. And that's just a dollar a day. You could become a covenant partner and start to help do some worldwide evangelism. Praise the Lord. So you want to be a part of that. There's envelopes that are there. Our trustees have envelopes. There's envelopes there on the back of that seat in front of you. Or if you want to give through our website, you can do that. Go to uh, victoryoutreachkansascity.org or download our VOKC app and you can give through our app today as well. I want the trustees to come forward and as you prepare that special gift to the Lord, let me read you a quick scripture and then we're going to give this morning. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 through 8 that you must decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves, help me finish this. He loves a cheerful giver. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Ain't the word good? Amen. And today we want to give to God something special in it. We don't want to give under pressure like the word says, or we don't want to be uh, uh, pressured to give or pulled on to give. But today we want to give from the heart. And it's not just an amount thing, uh, the, the, uh, the size of the offering, but it's a heart thing. Somebody say a heart thing. God wants to see where our heart is because nobody likes somebody giving them something in a mean way. Amen. Especially when they owe you. And you be like, you got my $20? Here, take that little funky $20. You would be like, hold on, wait a minute. I didn't give it to you like that. Hold on, pick that money up and give it to me the way I gave it. Now I'm just playing. But y'all y'all do that for real. Nobody like that. Take that little money. I don't need, no. And God don't like that either. But the Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. The same way he gave it to us with joy and with love and compassion, we give it back to him with a cheerful heart. Come on, somebody say amen. 
And this is our moment, and this is our opportunity to give something special to God with a cheerful heart. So I want you this morning to lift up that gift that you're going to give to God, and I want you to put a big old smile on your face. Amen. I want your face to reflect the feeling that you have in your heart. Amen. And even if you don't have anything to give today, I want you to still lift your hands with expectation, saying, God, I don't have it now, but I'm believing that you're going to open up doors for me. I'm believing that you're going to provide some seed so that I can sow into the house of God. So lift it up today and let me pray for you this morning. Amen. God, we love you. We lift you up. We thank you. And today we want to give to you with a cheerful heart. God, you've been so good to us. You've been so faithful to us. We can't deny your faithfulness or your goodness because it surrounds us each and every day. And God, we just give back to you with that same type of heart. We want to be faithful to you, faithful with our time, faithful faithful with God, our giftings, faithful with our finances. So we give these gifts over to you and pray that you use them and that somebody's life will be impacted by the seed that we're sowing this morning. God, we love you. We thank you. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We want you to give this morning and while you're giving, pay attention to our screens. Hi, my name is Nora Saavedra and I'm from Third Wave LA. This year, I'm going to make coffee for hope. Today I'm making a white chocolate mocha with sweet cream vanilla cold foam. So let's get started. Making coffee in the morning is one of my favorite parts of my morning routine and I look forward to it every single morning. And when people come over, I want them to have that same exact experience and I love doing it for them. My favorite part about Run For Hope is that we get to do what we love and raise money to make an impact in this world. Run For Hope has impacted my life directly because I've seen the need being met in Europe, I've seen the need being met right here at my base at Third Wave LA, and it has truly changed lives. One country that I'm looking forward to seeing impacted is India, because that's where I'm from. And I know that there are girls just like me who are in need of hope and a sense of purpose that only God can give them. And that means my name is Noor, and this year I'm making coffee for hope. It's to raise finances for global missions. And it's not just about the finances, but this is what you call global worldwide evangelism. We're evangelizing and reaching people in places that we can't go. And I don't know if you were here for the Run for Hope kickoff service, but man, those videos touched my heart when we seen what's taking place all over the world, the hurt and the desperation that the people have to want to know Jesus and, and a need for our Savior. It's all over the world, and we get to share that by uh, raising money and giving finances uh, through Run for Hope. And so um, right now, if you don't know, there's different categories throughout our international ministry, and we are in the Lions category. Come on, the Lions in the house. We are in the Lions category, and there's about 40 churches in our category, and we are number 14 right now. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for that. We raised almost $18,000, and so we're still climbing, and I'm believing, God, that we can jump into the top 10 this week. If we all do our part, if we all get uh, do what God has called us to do, if we do what we love and raise finances, and it's real easy, you can go and you can be a part. You can register um, on our Run for Hope website. All you do is free to register, and then there's a, a special link that you can send out to family members and friends that they can donate to this cause and donate to what's happening all over the world. And so we want to continue to raise finances. We don't just want to crack the top 10, but we want to push for that number one spot. Amen. Praise the Lord. Nobody likes second place. Who likes second place? We want to push for number one, and we want to do it with cheerfulness and gratitude in our heart. So make sure that you become and you start become a part for Run for Hope. Start giving those finances. Amen. And there's something new that, that we're doing internationally. There's incentives each week 
And so this week, it started Tuesday, but it ends today. And the person uh, who raised the most money internationally gets a $200 gift card. And so that took place. But every week, there'll be special incentives. And so you want to continue to look out for those. Uh, if you have questions, our uh, international or our Midwest coordinator for Run for Hope is Sister Shirley Jones. She can get you more information about that as well. And then we're raising money for it today. Downstairs, we got some jambalaya. We're going to be having some food sales for those that like to eat. Every week we eat for hope. Amen. So we've got jambalaya with a slice of cake and a nice beverage on the side. You can't forget the Bev. Y'all don't know about that. But that's downstairs. It's $8 downstairs. $8 for the combo. Go downstairs and support World Missions. Praise the Lord. Also, I got a couple uh, more brief announcements. We've got Wednesday morning Zoom prayer. Amen. The prayer warriors are gathering together, and we're praying every Wednesday morning, 6 a.m. We wake up early, and we jump on that Zoom call. There's the link right there. You can scan it to get that uh, information, and we'll be on there this Wednesday from 6 to 7. So we want to see your faces or your background pictures. We want to hear your voices. So make sure that you join us this Wednesday. Praise the Lord. And then we're still doing our life group evangelism blitz. Let the life groups make some noise. Our life group, our life groups has been going out all month long. We've been reaching the lost and hurting. We've been going to the streets, and we're going to continue for the full month of September. So make sure that if you are a part of a life group, make sure that you come this Tuesday so we can hit the streets and tell our communities about Jesus Christ. Amen. And then we've been doing our Knowing God series as well. Every Friday, we've been diving in to the Word of God. We've been getting to know Jesus. This is our second uh, session of knowing God. The first time we did uh, knowing God, this time we're getting to know Jesus. And so um, we've been here every Friday. It's been an awesome, awesome time. We've got handouts that we pass out every week. So if you miss this Friday, you can still get one of those handouts. You can let me know. We can get you one because we don't want you to miss what's taking place in your church. And we don't want you to miss what's happening here and what God is doing. So if you need one, you can see myself or any of our leadership and we can get you one of those handouts. But you want to be here next Friday because we're continuing on with our Knowing God series. It's every single Friday. So this Friday, be here for that. And then last but not least, we've got our Hallelujah Night that's coming up on November the 1st. Come on, give God a praise for that. We've got a special artist named EGR. He's coming all the way from Victory Outreach, Stockton, California. If you don't know who he is, we just want to give you a quick, quick little snippet of one of his videos. So pay attention to the screen. Not the right now. Homie, I'm a wifer. All right, all right, cut it, cut it, cut it. We don't want to give you too much, not too much, okay? Because I seen some heads bobbing, some feet tapping. Y'all's about to get up in a minute. But we want to save that energy for the 1st, November 1st. And we want to show up, pack this place out. We want to have a great time. We want to fill this place and show EGR what Victory Outreach Kansas City is all about. 
I know he's from the West Coast and they doing their thing, but we're doing it in the Midwest as well. So make sure you invite your family, your coworkers. We're going to have a great time that night. So you want to be here, bring some people. We want some students in this place and show them that you can still have fun while being saved. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. But um, real quick, I want to throw one more shout out um, about run for hope we've got a car wash next week amen praise the lord we've got a car wash on september the 28th it's going to be over on 47th at the kfc in the parking lot and so we're going to be taking over their parking lot there's no chicken for nobody that day victory outreach is taking over we're washing cars for the community so bring your car out see pastor dan or sister angie they got some tickets that they're going to be selling for that they're doing what they love and we're raising finances so make sure that you are a part of that. If you have a vehicle, make sure you get it cleaned up. Praise the Lord. So I want you to stand, and I'm going to call up our music team, and we've got some special music this morning. Nowhere to go 
When you feel me low, no Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what's up. That's what's up. Re lean over and tell your neighbor that's what's up. Giving God praise. That's what's up. That's why he created us. When it's all said and done, we're going to give God praise. He said every knee, every knee, King. Hallelujah, lawyers. I don't care who you are, what kind of authority you got. He said every knee is going to bow. Come on, give God some praise. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You don't have to force me because I see you. I see your hand at work in my life. I see evidence of your glory. I see evidence that you're king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I want you to stand to your feet. We're going to read the Word of God. So we want to reverence God and we want to read the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give God all praise and honor and thank God for uh, what he's done. You know, the magnificent thing about God is that he's not a God uh, of a next second chance or a third chance or a fourth chance or even a fifth chance. He's a God of another chance. He's a God of another chance. So he's not like us. We say, I'm done with you. I didn't I did this for you and this for you and this for you. I'm done with you. God ain't like that. Somebody ought to give God praise right now. That's a good place to give God praise. Thank you, God, for putting up with me because I was a hot mess when you found me. And even after you found me and cleaned me up, I was still a mess. I know I'm talking to the right church this morning. Hallelujah. Uh, you know what? Uh, Thank God for our, our pastors, man. Pastor Dan and Sister Mary, uh, just a powerful work that God sent, amen, from Chicago here to Kansas City about 26, 27 years ago. And uh, thank God that uh, some kind of way, man, God found me. I was in a mess. And he said, go to Victory Outreach. Not just you, but I'm going to bring your whole family. I'm going to reassemble you. 
I'm going to breathe the breath of life upon you. I'm going to clean you up, and I'm going to fill you with the Holy Spirit, and then I want you to be a model for me. I want you to be a model for me. Amen. I praise the Lord. I look up in the balcony. I see number 10 up there. He's up there. I see him. Look what God has done. You see? God's working on my children. Amen. Praise the Lord. He, he did. He worked on me. And so I just got to, you know, let him do what he does. Amen. In the lives of my family members. Amen. He, he promised it. He would, he would save them. He's able to save them. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we want to... Uh, recognize it was yesterday it was sister mary's birthday right yesterday come on give god a praise sister mary's birthday was yesterday amen that's our we call her mama mary i mean she's the first lady and uh man she's a powerful woman of god she's anointed amen anointed man uh to preach the gospel uh, amen to speak into the lives of broken women women that had lost their way women that were drug addicts prostitutes alcoholics but then women that were goody two shoes hello somebody never drank never cussed but they just thought they was all that and, and she spoke into their lives and said you need to humble yourself before the mighty hand of god amen praise the lord and and we see god working through her all across the region amen god is able to what uh, uh, build regions within regions. I hope you hear what I'm saying right now. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew. Praise the Lord. Hey, the weather is out there. Uh, cars are dirty. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, we got a car wash coming up. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I know everybody need a car wash. Amen. So you can get your ticket today. Amen. I got them in my back pocket right now. I'm able to... I'm able to <laughs> I, I've been passing them out this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, $8 for cars, $10 for SUVs. Yeah, well, Pastor, you know, Pastor, I, 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 got, I can't make it that day, you know. Well, amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and get the ticket, and we'll bless somebody else with it, or you can give it away to somebody. Amen. It's a donation to the church. Amen. To world missions. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank God for my beautiful wife, Sister Angie. Amen. She's my... Uh, my 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 side by side partner. I said side by side. She's not down here. Amen. She's. I mean, just like the Bible talks about how God pulled the the rib out of Adam's side. Amen. And he and he set the woman next to Adam. Amen. And it's like, dude, that's too much power for you. You don't even know what to do with all that. Give me that. And then he he, he gave he gave it to the woman. Amen. And so, amen. Everything that you see, amen, is a result of her being next to me. Hello, somebody. Come on, somebody. Uh, the greatness, all anything that we see, that you see, that God is doing, man, it, it's it's God has put us together, man, and we're not we're not the same when we're apart, amen. Matthew twenty eight, amen. Go to there, go there, on your with your uh, on your Bibles. Twenty eight, verse sixteen. Let me watch my time up here. We're going to read uh, 16 through 20, and it says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, verse 20, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, somebody say surely. surely. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. One more scripture, Acts 1.8. Turn over there real quick. Acts 1-8. I should have gave them to you both, but I'm just a little excited, amen, uh, to be up here and uh, trying to focus and uh, get what get done with God for giving me to get done, amen. As you turn it over there, they were singing that song. You know, I'm over there praying, God, I need you to help me to give them this message and everything that you've given me to do, God. And they were singing that song. I just want to be with you. I said, man, but when all, when all that's done, man, uh, forget what I'm asking you. I just want to be with you. Amen. Because if I'm with him, 
I know everything else is taken care of. I ain't got to worry about nothing. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Remember what we just read in Matthew 28, 16 through 20. But Acts 1, 8 says, but you, tell your neighbor, but you, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Kansas City, in Grandview, in Independence, Hello, somebody. In Kansas City, Kansas. In Wyandotte. Hello, somebody. In Leavenworth. In North Kansas City. All across the Midwest region, you will be my witness. In Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, this morning for everything you've already done. God, I sense your presence I sense your Holy Spirit is here. God, we pray, Lord, that you would have your way, that you would take control of this service, even the the audience, even those watching on YouTube and Facebook, God, that you would come and invade their space, invade their heart, not just what's around them, but God, come on the inside of them. Let them know that you are the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one who summons us by name, the one who gives us specific assignments and task for the glory and honor of your son, Jesus Christ, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the kingdom, and for your name's sake, God. I ask this in Jesus' name. And the whole church shouted amen. amen. Tell somebody, I'm a witness. Amen. amen. We're going to give a title for this message. It's called the testimony of a witness. Let's see what we got up there. Testimony of a witness. Hello, somebody. Amen. Uh, and we see, amen, uh, you know, when uh, some of you uh, know about court. Some of us know about court. Hello, somebody. Uh, we know. We've been in there praying that the judge was going to have mercy. Amen. We're praying that uh, that officer didn't show up, the witness, hoping that he didn't show up. But then if there was somebody that was in your favor, you was hoping that they would show up. They ain't going to tell what really happened. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Where I, you know, when I came up, you know, because of my, my lifestyle, my background, we would see each other. We said, hey, what's up, man? Uh, hey, it's good to be seen. Yeah, but it's good to be seen and not spotted. You got to understand what I'm saying. It's good to be seen and not spotted. Right, because some of us had that, that lifestyle. We would be creeping in the dark, doing all kinds of stuff, hoping that nobody saw us. H- hello, yeah. So, some of us get that midnight call, late at night. What you doing? Nothing. What you doing? Nothing. You need some company? Hello. Hoping that nobody saw you. But there is one who sees all things. The Bible says nothing is laid bare. He sees all things. He's all-knowing. So we see in the scripture the religious leaders, amen, uh, didn't want the news of Jesus rising from the dead, amen, on the third day to service, right? Jesus had risen from the dead. We read that, amen, in in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. And and so uh, uh, they wanted this Jesus stuff to stay dead. Yeah, they, they didn't want, they said, man, that's, that's it. Now, we got him, we killed him, and it's all over, and we ain't got to worry about it. Amen? And, and, and so, uh, in, in Matthew 27, verse uh, 62 through 64, we see them post guards at the tomb, Right? Because they're about to put together a witness tampering plot. I hope you see, witness tampering j- just didn't start uh, last week with the guy in New York. Hello, somebody. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. They wouldn't give him no bail because he's known as a witness tamperer. Oh, Jesus, I know I'm talking to the right group. And you, Matthew 27, 62 through 24, we got some lovers. Uh, P. Diddy. Hello, somebody. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate 
Verse 63 says, Sir, they, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. That last deception will be worse than the first. And then we see, we see evidence, right? We see uh, Mary Magdalene in Matthew chapter 28, verses 9 through 11, uh, 9 through, I'm sorry, uh, verses, yeah, I think it's uh, uh, verse number 9 right there. It starts to talk about uh, Mary Magdalene in, in the book of Matthew. But Jesus, uh, the risen Christ, amen, he's out the tomb, and he meets with Mary, and he tells her, go and tell all my brothers and my sisters, right? Tell them to go to Galilee, and there they will see me, amen? Uh, but we see witness tampering continues in Matthew chapter 28, verse 11 through 13. It says, while the women were on their way, amen, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. Verse 12 says, when the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. Hello, somebody. Witness tampering. They tried to tamper with the witness, right? Uh, Mary Magdalene's already seen the risen Christ, right? So they're already plotting, man. We're going we gonna to kill that thing, right? We're going to kill it. Hello, somebody. See, the resurrection is the central doctrine of Christianity or the main pole in the tent, as, as we say, regarding Christian faith. It affirms that God raised Jesus from the dead on the third day, just like he said. Tell, tell your neighbor, just like he said. He did it just like he said he was going to do it, amen? The apostle Paul declared Christianity is meaningless without the resurrection. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, just jot that down uh, uh, for a confirmation if you want to look at that scripture. On another occasion, while Jesus was still alive, he told Martha and Mary, I am the resurrection. Now, you guys remember the story, right? That Lazarus had died, and, and Jesus uh, took four days to get there. So when he got there, Lazarus was what? Good and dead. That's what the Bible talks about, right? And both of them, Mary and Martha, they, they hung out with Jesus on occasions, right? And here he is coming. He finally came, and they said, Man, if you would have been here, he never would have died. If you would have been here, right? And, and well, well, but we know that you're able, what, to resurrect him. And he looked at him. He said, girl, I am the resurrection. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Man, that's a cold-blooded thing. He said, man, I am the resurrection. You know how you tell somebody, I thought you knew. You better ask somebody. I'm talking a little urban, give you a little urban talk, amen. You understand what I'm saying. Thought you knew. That's what he was saying. You didn't know, right? And so uh, this thing is, is, is getting big because, because he had given them a command, amen, uh, when he met with them and he gave them instructions. Jesus gave the, the disciples instructions, amen, about uh, what they were supposed to do. And he pointed out some places a, a, about uh, Judea and J Jerusalem and, and Samaria. Well, J Judea was the region that, that Jerusalem was actually in. Hello, somebody, right? And, 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 and uh, Samaria was the adjoining region to the north, amen? So I'm just trying to give you a little insight, a little more about what he had told them and, and how much uh, ground he wanted them to cover. But we, we see Paul later on, Paul wanted to witness the resurrection in a personal way, right? He wanted, he wanted to be a, a, a different kind of witness in Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. And, man, you can just jot this down. It says, it says I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power. Somebody say power. power. I want to know the power. Where's Van at? Oh, Jesus. They left me. Oh, hallelujah. He says, I want to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, um, becoming like him in his death. 
and, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Uh, he wanted a close-up. Amen. He wanted to experience what Jesus had experienced. He, the Bible says that we need to what? Be like Christ, right? We have to have what? A Christ-like mind. And, and so here it is. Paul, he takes it personally, right? He internalizes it, right? Somebody say we got to internalize the vision. He, he internalized the vision, amen, that Jesus had given him. And he says, man, I want to know the power of his resurrection. I want to participate in his suffering, becoming like him in death, amen. And so uh, many of us, uh, we, we saw the flyer earlier uh, when we were talking about life group blitz, amen. So this is an opportunity, amen, to go out and be a witness. That's what's up. Right? Somebody say, I'm a witness. This is an opportunity for all the people in the life groups, amen, to, to go out and, and be a witness. But we see that the scripture already says, uh, Jesus told them that the what? Harvest is what? Plentiful, but the laborers are few. So every week in the month of September, we've been out every Tuesday uh, uh, being a witness. Hello, somebody, right? We've been being a witness, but that, that, that uh, participation, that, that thing has been shrinking every week, shrinking down every week. Some never came. It's like, no, no, let them do that. Let them do that. Amen. But I'm here to tell you that the blessing of the Lord is upon the ones, the righteous ones, right? The ones that say yes, yes, yes. Somebody say yes. Yes, Lord, yes, right? And that, and that, this is a powerful, powerful thing that, that God has invited us to, to uh, participate in. It's a privilege, amen? It's a privilege. And so how many know that uh, we're in the last harvest season right now? Uh, let me tell you, we're in the last days. That represents the last harvest season, right? So from the time that Jesus stepped on the earth, right, up until today and, and, and tomorrow, if tomorrow comes, this is the, the last harvest season. So where are you at? Where are you? See, Luke, uh, 10, Luke 10, chapter one, uh, 10, uh, verses 1 and 2, it says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town, amen, and every place where he was going to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. See, Jesus uh, has given uh, the witnesses direction, amen, to, to what? Pray, to recruit, and to, and to equip others to join us, right? But, but, but however, before we pray for the unsaved, I want you to hear me, church. Before we pray for the unsaved, he's telling us to pray that other disciples, other members of Victory Outreach Church, hello, somebody, will come and, and be a witness. They will join with us in reaching out to the unsaved. Somebody say praise the Lord, right? He's, he says, man, pray, amen, for the people that are already with you, but they're, but they're not participating, right? Some of them have gifts and talents, right, that are going to help, right, reach hurting people. They're going to be able to encourage people. They're going to be able to inspire people. They're going to be able to testify and be a witness to people. They're going to be able to speak to people that nobody else can speak to. I hope you hear what I'm saying, church. God has given each one of us a gift. We've been anointed to be a witness for Jesus Christ. He said, the, he said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be what? My witnesses. The power of God will come upon you. See, a witness is a person who bears witness or testimony to present evidence for or against a person or thing. In this case, uh, Acts 1-8, be my witnesses regardless of the consequences. Woo! He said, I want you to be my witnesses regardless of the consequences, right? That, that See, Jesus, right, all we got to do is look at Jesus, and we'll see that Jesus was a witness, amen? From the time he started his ministry, he was a witness. Somebody say amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
But some of us are a little afraid or we're a little shame or a little bashful or, or a little doubtful or a little fearful. We know all these things come up. They crop up when it's time to go and be a witness. But how many know that when you get saved, God enters you into the WPP program? You say, what's that? God enters each one of us into the WPP program, the Witness Protection Program. The witness protection program. Somebody say, no weapon. No weapon formed against me. What that band at? I need the band. I, 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 oh, there he is. Hi. Hey, man. Come on, be with me. Hallelujah. He said, man, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. If I be for you, who can be against you? The enemy can't harm you. Uh, the, no height, no depth. Hello, somebody. No principality, no demonic force. Nothing on earth, nothing human will be able to stop you. This is a promise from God. Because you're in the witness protection program. We ain't got to be afraid of nothing. We see Paul, the snake attacked him. The snake bit him. He shook the snake off. I'm looking for some people that ain't afraid to shake off some stuff. We got to shake off some stuff to be a witness. Hallelujah. See, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they, they didn't want the disciples to be out testifying and being a witness, right? I mean that song, you got a big mouth and you never shut up. It don't apply to the disciples, to the witnesses. You can have a big mouth and do what God has called us to do. We need some big mouth people in here. I know some of us in here got some big mouth. You know who you are. You always got to have the last word. Always got to have the last word. Ask your spouse if you married. Which one? Or both of you are. God wants you to be a witness. Acts 1 8 talked about the power. Hallelujah. The power received from the Holy Spirit gives the witness courage, it gives the witness boldness, it gives the witness confidence, it gives the witness insight, it gives the witness ability. Hello, somebody. It gives us authority. The power, when the power comes upon you, God gets you ready. Hello, somebody. Nothing can stop you. God's coming to encourage us. God has given us here at Victory Outreach all these wonderful things. All these wonderful things God has given us. Hallelujah. You got to give me back my document. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Let me go back. I had it. Let me go back and get it again. Come on. We're talking about being a witness. Are you excited about being a witness? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It's nothing like being a witness. It's, it's, it's a job you'll never be in the unemployment line. Hello, somebody. There'll always be work to do. Always work to do. Always work to do. Hallelujah. I don't want to touch the wrong one this time. I did that. Hallelujah. There it is. Testimony of a witness. Come on back. I hit the wrong button. Uh, hallelujah. So, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, quite a few things already. So, uh, here it is. Amen. We know that God has given us here at, uh, at Victory Outreach, Kansas City, even Victory Outreach International, God has given us power. We see the power of God working all around the world in Victory Outreach International. There's no way that we could be, amen, in all those places, over 500 churches in 33 different countries, over 350 victory homes, right, men and women's homes 
in those 33 countries. There's no way that could take place unless, amen, God has given us the power, amen, the power to be witnesses. And that's what happened. Men and women, amen, weren't ashamed of the gospel. And they said, I'll be a witness. I'll go to that city. I'll go to that country. I'll be a witness for Jesus Christ. God set me free, right? I'm going to tell somebody about it. I want to tell somebody about it. As I was studying and, and writing down some things, I heard of the revelation from, from the Holy Spirit tell me, I will give you power to take advantage and capitalize on opportunities. I, the Lord, will present to you that will move my church forward while saving many lives, says the Lord. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. I'm here to tell you. God, amen, has a plan and a purpose, amen. The Bible said it's not to harm us, but it's to make you what? Prosperous and successful. That's a promise from God. When I heard that, I was like, what? You, you, you're going you're gonna to make me what? Prosperous? I mean, that's, that's what I always wanted to, I wanted to be prosperous and successful. Amen. I, I didn't know. They taught me to be prosperous and successful. You got to lie. You got to cheat. You got to steal. Right? You, you got to sling this or sling that. I know I'm talking to the right people. Uh, you you, you got to have these con skills. Hello, somebody, right? He said, no, no, you ain't got to do none of that. All you got to do is what? Be, obey, be obedient to the word of God. Talk to God on a daily basis, and he's going to make you prosperous and successful. He's going to put you around some other people. Right, that's trying to do the same things. And you guys going to get synergized off of one another, right? You're going to be encouraged when you see one another, right? Because of the power of the Holy Ghost, right? You're going to be a witness to one another. Man, this is what God did. Wow, man, I was over here. This is what God did. I, I, you, you're being a witness, man. This whole life that God has given me is to be used to be a witness. I, I'm here to encourage somebody this morning. you got to be a witness. That's what God is saying. I, I'm going to give you, he, said, he, and he used that word, he used that word, amen, uh, 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 he used that word capitalize, amen. That means to profit or, or benefit, amen. Uh, uh, and so we want to make sure we understand what God is saying to us, hallelujah. I'm going to give you uh, some DNA traits of a witness real quick. I'm going to give you a few DNA traits of a witness. When I say DNA, that means what? Disciples in action. Disciples in action. DNA, amen, of a witness, right? The, whole, the first one is a witness waits on the Holy Spirit. The witness, a witness waits on the Holy Spirit. They know that I must be led. Somebody say I must. Be led by the Holy Spirit, right? I need to be led by the Holy Spirit. I need to be led while I'm in my house with my wife and my children, right? I'm being a witness to my wife right inside my house. I love somebody. To my children, amen. You saw what God did, amen. You saw how it was all messed up. Hello, somebody. One of my children, they're here right now. They came down in the basement. I had been on one of those five-day missions. It wasn't a mission being a witness for Christ. I was being a, another kind of witness, for that little white rock. Hello, somebody. And I had been gone for five days, and he walked down those stairs. And he didn't know I was down there. He came down there, and I was standing there. And he saw me, he said, wow. Hello, somebody. But look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He lifted me up thrice in time. Oh, I'm going to praise him. Jesus is still the same. I'm going to praise him. The Lord has done. Come on, clap your hands right there one time. This is what God does when you want to become a witness. Amen. In, in Luke chapter 24, 
verses 45 through 49. We're talking about a witness based on the Holy Spirit. It says, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. How many know you can't understand the scriptures until your mind has been opened by the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost comes and he helps you find the mind that you lost. He, he helps you. You're looking around and lost my mind. They, that's what everybody's saying. That, he done lost his mind. He helped me find my mind. And then he put it back in my hand. And he said, now mind, be like Christ. Be like the mind of Christ. Hello, somebody. And then after he did that, he said, now put on the helmet of salvation. I want you to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Grab the sword of the spirit and put on the belt of truth. Put those shoes shod with peace and go be my witness. That's what the Lord is saying. Hello, somebody. I want you to be my witness. I've equipped you. I've clothed you. I've suited you. Now you're ready to go. You're ready to go. He told them, verse 46, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And re repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city. Somebody say, stay in the city. Stay in the city, stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Stay in the city. That means I want you to stay in that church Sunday, that victory outreach on Sunday. I want you to stay there, be there every week at 10 a.m. for prayer. I want you to be at the life group on Tuesday. Be on time for the life group. I want you to be at the Friday knowing God's Lord. Stay in the city, says the Lord. I want you to be uh, disciples uh, in, those, in those meetings, those discipleship meetings. I want you to make all those in-person and Zoom meetings. Stay connected to the leadership at Victory Outreach Church. Pray for all the leaders and stay connected to the vision, says the Lord. God is intentional. God doesn't do anything by coincidence. Oh, man, I just stumbled upon that. Even the farmer, when he was working in the field, that's all we are, is farmers working in the field. The farmer was working, and the Bible says that he stumbled upon a treasure. But God was intentional even in that. He said the man, the farmer, discovered the treasure. He went and sold everything. He hid the treasure first and, and then went and sold everything else that he had and came back and got the treasure. Hello, somebody. And how many know that the treasure represents Jesus Christ, right? He found that treasure, and his life was never the same. And after he, after he got the treasure, he bought that field that he was working in. Hello, somebody. He became an entrepreneur. He became a businessman. Hello, some. I know I'm talking to the right people. And then he was able to be a witness and tell people, man, this is what the Lord has done. God came and found me, rescued me. You see, the work of God requires the power of God. Many of us like getting on with the work, even if it means getting ahead or running ahead of God. But sometimes waiting is part of God's plan. Sometimes waiting is part of God's plan. Now, I found out I was going to be up here on Sunday. I'm trying to move everything else out the way. So I was like, oh, God, here it is. You know, even the Bible says be ready in and out of season. You think, but God is a... Is a uh, He's a, 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 a on-time God. He's a real-time God. Amen. So, so I, I believe that, yeah, you can have a message that God gave you, amen, uh, but I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to say, yeah, use that message. But I believe that God wants to give a, a fresh word every single time I get up here. He don't want me to go back and use something that he already gave me. I hope you hear what I'm saying. So, so I, no matter what I'm trying to do, God is saying, dude, why, why are you getting all ruffled and, and trying to panic and telling people you can't do this and you can, you've already planned that these were the things that you were going to do. He says, I already know all that. So I'm going to be with you. He, the Bible says, I'll go before you. I'll level the mountains. I'll knock down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron, right? So accomplish everything that you've got to do. There's a thing called priority. I'm being a witness when it comes to talking about priority right now. And some of us, we, we get caught up with saying, man, uh, that's too much what they're asking us to do at that church. 
No, it ain't. Tell your neighbor, it ain't too much. God said he wouldn't put nothing upon us that we couldn't bear. He would never do that. That's the word of God. So, so how many know we need God's timing and God's power to truly be effective? See, God prepares his witnesses for battle. In Psalms chapter 144, verse 1, it says, I'm going to read this. It says, praise the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Develop, uh, uh, develop his witnesses. He developed his witnesses for long suffering. Hello, somebody. Somebody say, long suffering. I know we don't like that. We don't like to suffer long. See, suffering strengthens hope by revealing and refining who we are. Suffering brings sin to the surface and exposes the hidden work of God within us. That's what's happening. God brings us into the season of long suffering. Some of us are dealing with some stuff right now. But God wants you to be a witness and tell people how God kept you through that place, through that season, right? How he delivered you, right? All you got to do is look over your shoulder and you say, wow, he did that. He brought me out of that thing. He brought me out of this thing, right? Man, God wants to he wants you, give you that microphone. He wants you to broadcast and tell people, man, this is what the Lord did. I was in this place, but I'm here to tell you I'm a witness for Jesus Christ, and this is what God did for me, and he brought me out. Somebody say he brought me out. He brought me out. I know he's brought everybody out. How many know that I'm a witness that God breaks every shackle and every chain? I'm a witness that he pulls down every stronghold. I'm a witness that he removes every hindrance and every barrier. I'm a witness that he's able to heal every sickness and every disease. I'm a witness that the Lord is able. I'm a witness that God delivers and breaks down places, places that I couldn't get past. God comes and breaks them down. He comes and sets the captives free. He opens the eyes of the blind. He touches the ear of the deaf that couldn't hear the word of God. He touches the mute, the ones that couldn't say, thank you, Lord. They couldn't raise their hand, but God comes and touches them. That's what he did to me. I was like this. I didn't know how to raise my hand, but God came and touched me one day, and I've been like this ever since. I've, been ha I've had a big mouth ever since that day. I've been telling people about Jesus. Jesus. How many know that God raises up witnesses in the victory home? God raises up witnesses in the victory home. We got some alumni right now, but our victory home, they're down in St. Louis right now. Uh, 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 building up that church, help building, amen, right now in St. Louis, Missouri at our baby church with Pastor Aaron and Sister Shauna. Amen. Pray for them. Continue to pray for them that God is going to do it. Amen. Uh, uh, he had given me a word for them uh, a couple of months ago. He says, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. And that's the word that I came to St. Louis with. Amen. So I'm here to tell you, God is doing great things. Our pastors are down there. Amen. Preaching and teaching this weekend. Here's the next point. A witness meets all requirements and qualifications. A witness meets all requirements and qualifications. Act chapter 4 Verses 12 through 13. The Bible reads like this. Salvation is found in no one else. This is Peter. He's preaching. Amen. This is his first sermon. Salvation is found in no one else. And there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Amen. So he's preaching. He's being a witness. Amen. Uh, the, the Sanhedrin is there. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. All people of authority, they're there. Verse 13 says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. Hello, somebody. They were astonished, and, tr and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a witness meets all requirements and qualifications. The only qualification and requirement you, that, that's, that's necessary is that you be with Jesus. Jesus. You spend some time with Jesus. All the elders and the leaders uh, at the Sanhedrin, they knew the disciples were untrained. They knew they were unschooled. They were amazed at what, uh, uh, what uh, uh, was happening, amen, at, at what they were seeing, amen, because these men had been with Jesus and what Jesus had done for them. See, I'm amazed at what God has done. 
and, and is doing through Pastor Sonny and Pastor Nick, amen, Pastor Dan, not to exclude all the other Victory Outreach International elders and pastors, regional pastors, multi-regional pastors around the world. I'm just talking about these three real quickly, amen, because I'm, I'm amazed, amen, to see a man come from Chicago, come from the hood, amen, in Chicago, a, a woman that, that was with him, amen. You've heard their testimony, but I'm amazed. You can see that they're just ordinary, unschooled people. Hello, somebody. If you look closely enough, but you will also see the anointing of God. You see the power of God working in their life. You see evidence of the power of of God working in their lives, that they've been a witness, amen, for the last 30 years for Jesus Christ, amen, praise the Lord. Yes, God is able to give you a good job. He's able to give you a house with a picket fence and a nice car. But what else does God want to do through your life? What are you willing to be a witness about? Hello, somebody, in, in Kansas City and Victory Outreach. Here's your next, uh, next point. Witnesses uh, overcome obstacles. Chapter uh, Acts chapter 4, verses 18 through 20. We're coming to, amen, an end here in just a couple of minutes. Then they called them in again and, and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus, right? But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes to listen to you or to him? You be the judge. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Amen. They were still saying, I'm a witness about Jesus the Christ. First of all, he said that he was going to be killed. He would be murdered. But on the third day, that God the Father would resurrect the Son from the dead. He would hang around, amen, for, for 40 days. And over 500 people saw him. Somebody say he was a good witness. Amen. He was a good witness. Jesus was a witness that other people could be a witness. That's what I'm trying to tell you. See, God has given us boldness and courage to get the word out about Jesus. He's given us boldness and courage to get the word out about Jesus. Amen. The next one, a witness is not disobedient to the vision. A witness is not disobedient to the vision. Acts 26, verses 12 through 22. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but, you know, they got Paul uh, uh, under arrest. Paul, uh, you know, they came and, and gaffled him up. Amen. Uh, and they, they, so they had him and he uh, went to uh, court there in Rome. And, uh, and then he's coming before what? King Agrippa. Amen. And so uh, they give him an opportunity to, to plead his case. Hello, somebody, you know, some of y'all been in court and they say, hey, well, what do you got to say about it? What, well, you want to you say something about the situation, right? So this is what happened. So then, then Paul begins to tell him about his encounter on the way to Damascus. He said, man, me and my companions, we was on our way, amen, with authority. That's what he's talking about. You know how some of us sometimes we think, that, hey, I, you can't tell me what to do. I, I'm running this. Y'all know I'm talking to, right? I'm running this, right? You ain't got no authority. You can't tell me what to do, right? And so, and so this is the mind that Paul had because uh, the, the rulers and authorities had given him permission to go and track down what? The believers. Go catch those believers, those Christians, and beat them down, right? Kill them, whatever you got to do. And he's telling uh, King Agrippa about his story, and he says, but then, he says, he, uh, he, he says, man, uh, there was a light. He says, about noon, keep Agrippa, I was on the road. I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun. Can you imagine seeing a light brighter than the sun? Whew. He says, man, he says, he says, I saw a light brighter than the sun uh, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground. We heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the gonads. And what he's really saying church. He says, why are you doing all that stuff that you're doing? Because what you think that you're doing something to the people of God, but what you're really doing, you're doing it to yourself. He says, you're doing it to yourself. The Bible says, then Jesus replied, he says, he's, he asked Jesus, who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. The Lord replied, now get up and stand to your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant, as a witness, and as a, a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people. Hello, somebody. Some of us need to be rescued from our own people. You know, you know how they do. Why are you coming over here with that Jesus stuff? I don't want to hear that. 
right? Can you turn that down? You'll be in the house listening to uh, 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 something uh, on your, you know, on your device. And uh, can you turn that down? Come on, wave at me if you know what I'm talking about, right? You're some of your family members, amen? Praise the Lord. So, so he says, I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I'm sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So then he says, here's my point. So then King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from help from heaven first to those in Damascus, right? He was going to Damascus, what? To bust some heads. Hello, somebody. He said, but first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and all Judea, and then to the Gentiles, I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. That is why some Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me, but God, somebody say, but God. But God has helped me to this very day, so I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am still nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen. He says, I'm not saying anything beyond what they already prophesied, right? So my question to you is, what are you doing to fulfill the vision that God has given you here at Victory Outreach, Kansas City, Missouri? Ask your neighbor, say, ask your neighbor what are you doing? You gotta ask them. You gotta be bold, right? You're being a witness, you know. Hey, what are you doing, right? Here's 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 the here's the last point. Here's the last point. For some reason, I keep touching this thing the wrong way, and it's uh, causing me some problems. Bear with me just for a second. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Last point, the uh, last point is that a witness is always ready to spread the gospel. A witness is always ready to spread the gospel. That means within your family, within your workplace, at school, in your community, or another city. Acts 16, verse 6. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Plagra and Galata, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Blithnia. But the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down the Tros. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel, to be a witness to them. See, as we seek God, we, as we seek his will to spread the gospel as a witness, we should be sure our plan is in harmony with God's word. We have to ask other mature Christians for their advice. Check our own motives to see if we're seeking to do what, what I want to do or what we think God wants. Lastly, but most importantly, we have to pray for God to open and close doors as he desires. As, as he desires. We see, in, we see uh, in a vision, Paul was given definite directions as he and his companions obediently traveled to Macedonia. We have to be sure that the Holy Spirit is guiding us to the right places, but he also guides us away from wrong places. Somebody say amen. He guides us away from bad relationships, guides us away from bad relationships, people that are not equally yoked. He guides us away from trouble, right? From troubles from our past. He guides us away from all those circumstances and conditions. He warns us when we're thinking about 
doing something or going someplace that he's already told us to stay away from. The Holy Spirit comes and warns us. It's like, you, you're about to mess up being a witness. I want you to be my witness. You, you can't go and do that. See, we can't let fear keep us from being a witness about our risen Jesus Christ. Jesus said he would acknowledge us before the Father if we acknowledge him before others. That's Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. We have to pray that God will open a door for us to be a witness and communicate the gospel. I want you to stand to your feet right there where you are. Hallelujah. We, talk, we talked about the testimony of a witness. And each one of us in this room, I don't care how old you are, I don't care how new you are, you know, uh, I didn't know that God was with me uh, all those times that uh, before I was saved, the Bible said Jesus died on the cross for my sins, even while I was what? In that sin. Somebody say amen. Are you thankful? Amen. When that guy pulled the gun on me and, and there was a, that steel door, uh, you know, those storm doors, but you could see through it, right? Uh, and he pulled a gun, but it was locked. He couldn't get in because I owed him $20. He pulled a pistol. Because I was like, dude, why are you sweating me about $20? I'm on the, on the side of this, this door he can't get through. And he's like, what? Pulled a pistol. Click. I heard it click twice. Click. Click. I'm like, phew. Took off. One day I was out of my mind. Walked out into the street. I just heard something. And the car literally touched my clothes when it went by. I've been in a car wreck where the car went off the highway. Off the highway. Flipped over several times. Boom, 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 boom. And we were out of our minds in the car on drugs car slid upside down and the only thing that stopped us from going into this through this into this big building was a big tree it stopped it stopped boom I'm hanging upside down in this car saying man I, if I, I gotta get this seat belt uh, unlatched because man the car is about to blow up and, and, I, and I finally my, my partner he's out of his mind he's kicking the windows in screaming because he's on that PCP <laughs> some of you know what I'm talking about you've seen you've seen him you've seen him out of his mind. Kicked me right in my mouth. My mouth was bleeding. Finally get the seatbelt unhooked. And the window was down. If that window hadn't been down, I would have been out. I had the seatbelt on. As soon as I made a motion to the window, some people were there. Come on, come on. Pulling me out. I'm like, I thought I was in a dream. Like, what just happened? Here today, I'm telling you that the Lord was with me every single place. Because he had a plan and a purpose for my life. That I would be here at this moment being a witness telling you that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And he wants to use your story to tell his story. He wants to use your story to tell his story. That he's a deliverer. He's a merciful, graceful God. And his love is unmatched. Uh, it's it's uh, it, you can't match it. It's matchless. His favor is beyond measure. People will be hating because the favor of God is on your life. Why you get that? Why she get that? I know I'm talking to the right people today. You know, we can't be afraid to share our testimony. I was saying, man, to the life group, man, I'm gonna send my 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 job. I'm a consultant. I work for consulting company, but I work for the USDA through this consulting company, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a contractor, so I'm like, I'm going to send the, the Run for Hope letter to, to them. And, and I kept putting it off. Week. But last week, man, something, I was like, even though I had to do all this, man, um, I sent the letter. I sent it to them, the Victory Outreach letter. I said, hey, I'm telling you about what I'm involved in at Victory Outreach. It's a powerful place where God is doing powerful things. And I'm in this uh, this event is called Run for Hope, and we have a Run for Hope car wash, right? And and this is to reach hurting people, and we we specialize in reaching what youth, at risk youth. That that's all this is in the letter. So I want you to partner with me. I want you to support me. You can come to the car wash, 
Or you can click this link and you can donate right now, today. Sent the letter. Probably the third day. Somebody say the third day. I get an email back from them. Hey, Dwayne, uh, the founders of EcoSelect, I'm going to use their name, they've uh, made a donation to your event. I go out and look on the website, and they put $600 on the website. Come on, give God praise. <laughs> and that's another form of being a witness. That's a form of being a witness. We just got to step out on faith. Right now, I, I want you to close your eyes just for a minute. I want you to close your eyes. If there's somebody in here right now, I want you to close your eyes. No looking around. If there's somebody in here and you're saying, man, I, I, I'm too messed up. I, I couldn't be a witness, man. I, I've got some things that I could, I could probably help with, but I, I don't think I would be able to do it, man. I, I can't see myself doing it, man. I got, just got too much stuff. I couldn't do it. If, that, if that's you, if that's you, I want you to stick your hand up right where you are. I just want to say a prayer for you. I just want you to stick your hand up. If that's you, if you don't think that, you know what, that you're able to be a witness, I want you to stick your hand up. If there's somebody in here and you haven't received Jesus, right, and you say, you know what, I want to receive Jesus Christ today. If you're in the balcony, no matter who you are, right, you can stick your hand up. I just want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for the witnesses right now. If you're a witness, I want you to come to this altar. Don't, I want you to come quickly. If you're a witness for Jesus Christ, step out of those chairs and come on. You know that you're a witness. Maybe you haven't been the type of witness that God really wants you to be, but you know you're a witness. You know that God has saved your life. He's delivered you. He's set you free, but you haven't been around, right? You haven't been around. Come on, lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. The Spirit of the Lord is here. He wants to empower you. He said, when the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Step up to the altar. Hallelujah. Don't miss this opportunity if you're in your seat. If you're a visitor, it doesn't matter. Make your way. Make your way. God wants to anoint you to be a witness. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to empower you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Here we are. Here we are, God, for your witnesses. God, you called us by name. God, you called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. You transformed us by the renewing of our mind. We're not the same anymore. We're not the same. We don't have the same mind. God, we're still dealing with some problems and some struggles, but we know you called us. We know that we belong to you. You're our God. And we're your people. Here we are. Come on, lift up those hands. Talk to them. Talk to them. Tell them you're a witness. Say, I'm your witness. I'm your witness. Have your way. I'm your witness. I'm your witness. Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you. Hallelujah. Have your way this morning. Bless your name. In Jesus' name. We thank you for witnesses. We thank you for witnesses. Oh, God, have your way. Holy Spirit, this is the man and the woman, God. You call them out of darkness. They're together, God. Equip them, develop them, build them to be a powerhouse, a powerhouse. The power of God is upon you. The Holy Spirit is upon you, says the Lord. I've called you. Have your way. Have your way. You belong to me, says the Lord. I've called you. You're my witness. You're my witness. Shout out on my soul. Have your way, God. The Spirit of the Lord. We need you, Holy Spirit. Touch your people. Be with them. Empower them. Here they are. Oh, God, make them, develop them. Use their lives. Use their lives, Heavenly Father. These are your witnesses. God, have your way. No matter where they go, no matter whether it's school, work, no matter whether it's at the grocery store, they're your witnesses. They belong to you, Heavenly Father. Use families. Use the husband. Use the wife. Use the whole family. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Have your way. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, said the Lord. If I be with you, who can be against you? I've, I've delivered you. I've set you free. 
I'm giving you direction. I'm giving you a new life, said the Lord. Have your way. Have your way. I'm, the, I'm, I'm doing things. I'm doing things. I'm doing things, oh God. Have your way. Touch them, Lord. Touch young lives. Touch these young lives, God. We lift up your name. We praise you and we honor you. We thank you for what you're doing with our young lives, with the middle schoolers, the high schoolers, God. Have your way. We praise you, Lord. We thank you. Touch these witnesses. Touch these witnesses. They belong to you. Anoint him. Open up their mouths and their ears so they can hear the voice of God. They can hear revelation, confirmation. They can receive instructions. Oh, God, anoint them that they'll be able to trample upon scorpions and serpents. They'll be able to cast out demonic forces. They'll be able to lay hands on the sick, and they shall get well, says the Lord. You're my witness. You're my witness in Jesus' name, 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 in Jesus' name. name. You're my witness. I've called you out of darkness. I'm transforming you. I'm doing great and mighty things, says the Lord. They won't even know who you are when I send you. I'm going to send you to places you never thought I would send you to. I'm going to use your life. I'm going to use your story to tell my story, says the Lord. Have your way, God. Have your way. Touch these lives. Be with them. Be with them. Be with them. Don't despise small beginnings, says the Lord. Have your way. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you. Anoint, 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 anoint the power of God. The power of God. The power of the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and you shall be my witness. You shall be my witness. All authority has been given to me, says the Lord, and I'm using your life. I'm going to use you in Jesus' name. I'm going to use this life. I'm going to use your life. I'm going to use you to represent me. You're overcomers. You're an overcomer, says the Lord. Obstacles can't stop you. The presence of the Lord is on your life. Stay with me. Stay with me, says the Lord. I'm delivering. I'm clearing the path. I'm removing hindrances and barriers. Nothing can stop you, says the Lord. Every place you set your feet, I'll give to you, says the Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, have your way. Touch them, God. Touch them, Lord. In Jesus' name, be with them, Father. Touch their lives. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. We thank you, Jesus. Have your way. Bless these people. Touch these people. Touch them. Touch them. God, these are your servants. This is the, the third wave generation. We thank you, God, for calling them out of darkness into your marvelous light. Be with them and their family. Take them places. Speak to them in their dreams. Let revelations, let confirmation come their way. Let the power of God come upon their lives. Let their story be your story. In the mighty name of Jesus, these are witnesses in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right there where you are, right there where you are, we thank you, Lord, for this message about being a witness. Hallelujah. We know that the Bible talks about when Jesus was there for 40 days, the Bible says that the disciples were with him, and the power of God, the Spirit of God came and and took Jesus right from their sight. The Bible says that he he ascended through the clouds. He was gone. And they witnessed that. They witnessed the ascension. And they were able to go and tell people, this is what we saw. This is what happened. We're witnesses. But I'm here to tell you, church, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, the Bible says, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven just like he left. Just like he left, the Bible says that he's going to return. The resurrected Christ is going to return from heaven. It says, with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, angel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive 
will be uh, uh, and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will be with the Lord forever we will be with the Lord forever that's a promise from God but we've got to stay the course we've got to continue to be a witness don't take it lightly that God wants to use your story to tell his story maybe you didn't you didn't come to the altar today maybe you're, you stayed in your seat but God is able to touch your life. I, this message is going to go with you wherever you go because you know that God has called you to be a witness. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter whether you came to the altar or not, but you are a witness. God has given you that responsibility. And what are you going to do with it? Father, I thank you. Lift up those hands one more second, one, one more time. Father, I thank you for what you've given us. Lord, you shared with us the importance of being a witness. You talked about the testimony of a witness, the power that's involved in being a, a witness. There's nothing like it. The, it's the power that, that has the, the ability to reach into a, a blocked heart or a blocked mind. It's your Holy Spirit that, that comes along with the words that you give us to say when we're being a witness. You said the, the Holy Spirit will come upon us and give us words to say. We don't even know what to say, but you're going to give it to us. God, I've experienced it. I've experienced it. Didn't know what I was going to say. God, let it be like that for these men and women here today. Let it be like that. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, clap those hands for Jesus one time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. There's food sales uh, downstairs today. Don't, don't miss out on the Run for Hope food sales. Amen. And, and the Run for Hope uh, team, uh, the car wash team, we need to have a quick meeting with all of you right here in, in front. In the front. Uh, please don't leave if you're on the Run for Hope team the, the, that's going to participate in the car wash. You've got car wash tickets and all that. Please stick around. Praise the Lord. <laughs>